Welcome back, everybody. Our next session will provide a quick overview of how to utilize UGC to enable your community to start creating content to your game and help your players and get, start engaging with it. Please welcome the speaker, Ziad Jabali, product manager at Unity, to learn more. Awesome. All right, so everybody can hear me? Cool. We're going to just jump right in. Um, so everyone, welcome. Glad you could make it. So we're going to be going over user-generated content and how it's influenced the industry so far. We'll be going about into the different challenges you may face when trying to enable UGC for your communities. And then we'll be going into how Unity UGC can help you get started. So generally speaking, most of us have become very accustomed to a ton of user-generated content. Be it on YouTube, where I can spend hours watching Super Mario 64 speedruns, or watching a bunch of TikTok videos and realizing that maybe I shouldn't, uh, user-generated content is all around us. And it's often because it's creative. It fits a specific niche, and it's with the growing number of creators, there's honestly hours of content to engage with. And since this is GDC and this talk isn't about YouTube, let's talk about user-generated content in gaming. As an industry, we're absolutely no strangers to user-generated content. For example, since its inception, Skyrim has had over 62,000 mods created uh, on one website alone. Uh, half, or, um, Roblox has seen around 25 million virtual items in 2021 alone, and around 53% of people who've engaged with games in PC and console have created some form of UGC. And we're very familiar with the story, be it Half-Life that was modded into Counter-Strike that inspired games like Valorant, or Warcraft 3 that was used to create Dota that inspired games like League of Legends uh, and Dota 2, or even Arma that was modded into Battle Royale and that inspired games like PUBG and Fortnite. So it really doesn't stop there because people have been creating all sorts of unique experiences. Be it iconic maps like FY Ice World, or adding your favorite Pokemon to Skyrim, or building a whole game within a game, the possibilities are really endless. And for a second now, I want everybody to pretend that they're feeling especially inspired, that you've got an idea and that you want to add user-generated content to your game. And let's say that you've got this idea and you're thinking about what are the challenges I'm going to face. There's a few but tough surmountable challenges. And let's take a look. First, you're going to need to think about tech. Uh, how are your infrastructure is going to work? You'll need to figure out some way to enable publishing, downloading, uploading. Maybe you'll need a CDN to deliver content to, edge, to the edges and make sure content gets there very quickly. Next, you'll need to think about content creation. So how does that process going to work? Are you going to have it in your game? Are you going to have an external editor? Um, you need to find some way to guide your players through that whole process of creating content. Next, you'll need to think about moderation. And if you've spent any time on the internet, you'll know this can be a big problem. And having spoken to many developers uh, and hearing a lot of horror stories, um, you're going to have to find some way to quickly review content and make sure it meets your standards. Next, you'll need to think that all this moderated content, well, how relevant is it to your players? How do you show the most relevant uh, content to your players and, and help them get to the fun? And finally, you'll need to think about monetization. How have all this work that you've worked on so far help you and your studio keep going? and building the next game? And how do you reward your creators for creating content for your game? And depending on the, the, the challenge, or depending on the concept you have in mind, the challenges will vary. And so we spent some time trying to figure out how we could help the most, and we believe we've come up with a pretty good solution. First, we built the UGC Core and SDK. The UGC Core and SDK lets you focus on setting up all the simple com and most common UGC workflows, such as interacting with the content catalog, and setting up things like a CDN so that you can focus on gameplay. The UGC core can also work with any engine, but surprise, surprise, we're providing a Unity SDK to make integrations as simple into your Unity games. And the core exclu uh, also includes tags and webhooks so that you can extend the solution to fit an, uh, anywhere, like anything with your backend, so that you're never really locked into one piece of functionality. Next, we took a look at the Unity editor. And many of us are very familiar with the wide variety of content we can create in Unity. And so we built an optional plugin that lets you use the Unity editor to enable your creators to start creating right away. And it doesn't stop there because the UGC bridge is extendable. You can add and remove steps. And we've also included functionality that lets you programmatically 
validate content before it's published to your, uh, to your catalog. Let's move to moderation. Um, when it came to moderation, we tried to find the best way to let developers get through as much content in the most efficient manner. Moderation is fully API-based, but we've included a web portal that lets you perform all your modera moderation tasks quickly. And one of the coolest parts is you can distribute its capabilities to anyone, be it your staff members or your most dedicated community members. Next, we took a look at content discovery. And to avoid the headache of having to design search systems, we built all the search capabilities and criteria to help you, uh, to help you display the most relevant content to your creators. And this includes your typical criteria, such as most subscribed or most popular. But we've added more nuanced criteria, like trending or most engaging. Next, we took a look at a creator center. And we wanted to provide your creators with the ability and the functionality they need to review content, edit their creations, uh, and gain a deeper understanding of how they're performing. And also a place where you can distribute information so that people can get started and learn on how to create content for your game. And it doesn't stop there. Really, this is the beginning, and we really plan on listening to your feedback to best move the, our solution in the direction. All right. So to best wrap our head around this, let's take a look at what a simple UGC workflow might look like. Let's start at the editor. In this scenario, we built a simple user-generated experience. It leverages the UGC core, the UGC bridge, moderation, and the creator portal. And it allows players to create their very own isometric rooms. And for this scenario, we're leveraging the optional UGC bridge. You could absolutely build your own in-game experience and have them upload to your content catalog that way. So a player can just jump into a project and start adding things. In my case, just like in cooking shows, I have built up a prepped version, and, and it's here to go. On the right, you can see the UGC bridge plugin. I've simplified its steps, where there's only a sign-on and ability to add your, uh, the builder's name. Once I'm happy with my content, I can go ahead, prepare it for publishing, that builds an asset bundle, and prepares it for upload to the UGC core. Once I'm finished, I hit publish, and I'm ready to review it for my moderation team. I've used the webhooks feature to send me a message to my Discord, so that when new content needs review, I know that it, I can jump right into the moderation center and deal with it. The moderation center lets me get a quick view on all my moderation tasks, so I can just get to it and make sure that the content gets going. I'll click Review, quickly skim over it, and I, if needed, I could download it and view it in-game. But instead, all looks good, so I'll go ahead and prove my content. Let's jump in-game. Here you'll see our included content viewer prefab. You can drag and drop this into your game and adjust it to your needs. And it includes all the areas that I mentioned about search criteria. So you can show either new, trending, engaging, or whatever you'd like to display. And I can find my room, subscribe it, and return it to any time I'd like to, or return any time and I'd like to view it. Um, next, let's say I want to go see how my other content is doing. I can jump over to the creator portal and log in and see all the different rooms I've created. I can change their visibility, see how they're doing, make any adjustments, and it's all super simple. Um, so that was a really quick demo. But uh, one of the cool things you can do is hop on to that booth right there, and you can do that experience yourself and get your very own user-generated sticker uh, and get a bit more of an in-depth understanding of how it works behind the scenes. And I'm happy to help out. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, and if you're interested in getting early access, um, feel free to scan the QR code, and we'll be releasing our first uh, beta in April. Thank you. So I wanted to open it up to Q&A if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I'll we'll get you, Mike. Is that it? Is that going through? Oh, there we go. Uh, you were talking about how it's building asset bundles. Is that something that we can leverage with addressables too? Or is it purely through a manual asset bundle workflow that we have to work with? Sorry, I didn't hear it. Your question. But. Am I not talking into the mic? No, you can't. It's just super loud. Uh, <laughs> Here, I'll come in and we can talk. Sorry. So I was just wondering if uh, this solution will work with addressables as well, or is this something that we'll have to like build our own wrapper for uh, asset bundles to have it actually? No. So, th so yeah. So the content catalog is is content uh, agnostic. It can work with anything. So you can upload any type of content you'd like, uh, and works.
Is there going to be any support for scripting or at some level? That's a really good question. So there is support for scripting, but it's going to matter on the platform that you're working with. So depending on compilation time, it could be that you can't do so. So with Apple platforms like iOS, you won't be able to do it. But for Android, PC, et cetera, you would be able to do things like have people write code and, and uh, use that as user-generated content, absolutely. Would that also be in C-sharp, or would that be sort of a minified type of language? So you can absolutely do it in C-sharp. It's just the consumption would have to be on the other end. So if you're using Unity, you can absolutely write C-sharp code. We have customers doing something similar to that right now. So or, 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 yeah. OK, thank you. No problem. Any questions? OK, we're good. Thank you, everyone. Hey, we got one more question. Yeah. Uh, hello? Uh, hi. Uh, with the new UGC, uh, loading content at runtime was initially a problem that ballooned memory usage. Is this something that the addressables will fix or have fixed? Or is it something that's more of an editor only tool? So, um, that's a tricky one. I, I don't actually have the, the knowledge on that side enough to really give you a solid answer. I'm sorry about that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah.